So today I'm back with another tutorial and this time it's gonna be tutorial how to assemble brand 2 also known as brand 806 airsoft body kit for P3 gearbox and AK hop-up. So let's start with a barrel assembly. For this we will need STL files from zip package called barrel assembly. First big part is a barrel. What you can see on the video is custom made barrel. Basically, you are supposed to print this part. However, if you have access to the machinery, I recommend you to make yourself one from more durable materials, like I did in my case from aluminium tube. Also, I have a plastic part in the end. Uh, this part is there for the hop up interface. This is what I call the first gen barrel. In the future, I might make a second gen barrel, which will be simplified and less like real, real brand. And this will allow you to make yourself a metal barrel much more easier. Next part is barrel block. And as you can see, mine have thread inserts installed. If you can source these, there is a version of this file just for the nuts. And you should keep in mind that these nuts are low profile. If you are using nuts, then just push them from inside into the specially shaped pockets for them. So just to wrap it up, you can use both thread inserts or just nuts. Then we have the gas block, gas pin, and as you can see, I already installed the spring on it. This spring is there purely for imitation purposes. Another part is something what I called a C-clip. Also, you can choose between a thread insert version and nut version. Also, we have here AK hop-up and barrel. And you can notice there is a custom 3D printed slider on a hop-up already installed. Other than that, I have here gas pin locking lever, small spring, some pins, and M3 screws for hop up chamber. So let's start it. First part that we are going to assemble is barrel and barrel block. In just slides on. So let's put it on the side. Now let's take a gas block. We are gonna put a small spring into the pocket that's made in the gas block. Then we are gonna take the gas pin locking lever and we are gonna put it in the small channel in the gas block. Then we are gonna take our three millimeter pin. We'll secure our parts together. So this is it. Now we have a pin lever on its place and you can see it does work as it should. So right now we can put it on our barrel. On the barrel we will secure it using 4mm pin as you can see in the video. Next part on the list is gas pin. As you can see, there are a bunch of small cutouts in the face of the gas pin and one bigger. This bigger one is there to clear the notch on a gas block. So just slide the gas pin in and turn it to the left or to the right. That's up to you. The pin locking lever will then lock in one of the mentioned small cutouts on the face of the gas pin. Now let's install the barrel with a pop chamber. And when it's on the place, we will secure it 
with the two M3 screws. Next step is to install bottom rail with a C-clip. We will use M5 screws. When you are connecting the bottom rail to the barrel block, do not tighten these two screws down yet. It's because these two screws secure the barrel block on a barrel length and rotation wise. And when we are more into the assembly, we might need to move a barrel with the hop up more forward to the gearbox face. Uh, because if a different OEMs, the dimensions of the gearbox shell might be a little bit different. So this is the reason why we don't tidy these screws right now, but we will do it later when we are putting barrel assembly into the upper receiver. And after all of this, our last step would be to install our muzzle device. With a barrel assembly done, next on the list is stock assembly. So we have a telescoping part, main part, which have already locking button installed in it, locking lever and the main block, parts of the locking mechanism, and also pins and springs. So you will find these files in a zip file named stock. And there are basically two main versions of some of the files. Some are basically normal and some are named cable roots. I'm personally using the cable roots files because they have small channel in them that allows you to route your cables through so you can access your battery space in the stock itself. The double version files are stock block, main part and lever from the locking mechanism. However, if you choose to use more original files, you have to keep in mind you are going to have to use something like a battery box to store your battery. So now let's put it all together. As a first step, we will install a locking lever onto the telescopic part. For this mechanism, you will need two springs, but if you have access just to the only one, it will work just fine too. Pin I'm using here is not fully 3D painted one. This one has a small hole in it and you are supposed to put M3 screw or 3mm thick pin into it and glue it there. So this pin will be much more durable.
Okay, now let's put our telescoping part inside of the main part and let's secure it with a pins once again. But before that, here is my cable extension with a protective shrink wrap around the cables and it basically just slides into the channel. Because of the cutout into the telescoping part, you don't have to worry about your cables getting crimped when you collapse your stock all the way in. Now, now about this pin. If you put a solid pin through the stock, you will limit yourself on the battery space and basically you will get like half of the battery space you could get if you use these half pins. This means you are gonna make yourself two small pins. These pins go just deep enough so they don't protrude into the battery compartment, but they keep the scoping parts from sliding out from the main part. So the pins are in place and you can see now I can telescope the stock into the one of the three positions. The cable channels are big enough for the connectors. However, I'm not sure if you are going to be able to push Tamiya connectors through it. Okay, now the stock mount and its locking mechanism. We will need pen spring, 3mm in, and those two parts of the locking mechanism. The spring goes in first, then you put in the locking piece, push it in, insert the locking lever and secure it with a pin from the side. And this is how it's supposed to work. Now let's put it on a stock itself. To secure it together, we will use part that's called stock pin. You can see that there is a thinner part at the bottom and it goes in the thinner part first. Now the last missing piece is buttstock. To access a battery compartment, this part is removable. As you can see, it's not made in one piece. There is a buttstock itself, two separate rails and the locking tab. The rails are secured in place using M3 screws and the same thing goes for the locking piece. The locking tab is going to be printed flat. Then you are going to heat it and bend it in shape. In the end you will get stiff but spring-like mechanism that locks into the recess here. To install buttstock on the rest of the stock, just put it on place and using force push it until you hear a click. If you want to remove it, then you apply force in opposite direction and you will get the buttstock off.
And now you've got yourself a brand new stock. One of the two main parts of this kit is a lower receiver. What you can see here is partially assembled one. Installation of these parts is pretty straightforward, so I already installed them. We have here bolt release imitation, left side of ambidextrous mag release. and also the trigger guard board release imitation this part just slides in from the top and you put a spring element over it which you secure with a screw so it can have some range of movement also i installed the selective levers on the both sides the levers are from two separate parts. One is the lever itself and the second one is gear part. As you can see, I have made a bunch of prototypes. Some of these parts are SLA parts. However, I found out you can print these in FDM2. I recommend you to use PDG and 100% of infill. These parts and installation is basically the same for the both sides. The gear goes from inside, then you put a lever from outside on it and secure it with a free set screw or 3mm pin. Only difference is that on the left side there is a small spring and a ball in the selector lever itself. This works like a selector lever on AR-15s, which makes it clicks into the positions of the selector. You can use the spring and ball from genuine M4 slash AR15 selector. And it makes that sweet clicky sound. Uh, what's missing here is a mag catch, which consists from a mag catch button, spring and mag catch itself. You can use make catch uh, with a 3D printed threads or you can use thread inserts, which I recommend you to do. You can print the whole make catch, but that's not ideal, so I recommend you to just print the catching side and cut down. A screw, send a notch in that screw and glue it into the catching part of the mag catch as I did as you can see in the video. The installation is very easy. You put a mag catch from one side and a spring and Mackage button from the other side. Then you push the Mackage button in and you just screw the Mackage itself into the Mackage button. You can also see the Ambidextrous Mag release is working just fine. Another part of the receiver is backstrap. However, you install it after you put the gearbox in. So right now we will put it aside and we will install it later in the video. Okay, now the important part. What does this screw do? This screw keep the gearbox in line with the barrel. Because, because we have different OEMs, different manufacturers, some dimensions might be slightly different. So thanks. So thanks to this screw, you can set the correct height you need for your gearbox. In the front is something similar. I call it sendable spacer. 
you are supposed to send down the spacer to again get the correct height for the gearbox to sit in level with the barrel. All of this is there just because these dimensions can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, when you are gonna try to install your gearbox for the first time, take your barrel assembly with the hop up and inner barrel already in it, install this pin and try if your gearbox sits in level with the hop up and a barrel. If it does not sit in the barrel, then move the screw up or down or send the sendable spacer until you get everything in level. So it can be like this or this or this. It has to be perfectly in level. So again, so again, that's why we have the sendable spacer and the screw here because different manufacturers with different gearboxes are using slightly different dimensions. Right now we have lower receiver assembled and we can move on the next part. So the next one is upper receiver. Here is front and back sling loop. And we are gonna have to uninstall the front sling loop because these parts go in when the whole gun is basically assembled. Next part is a brass deflector. This part just slides in from the side and is secured with a roll pin. Bolt assembly is made from bolt imitation, which you put from inside. You secure it to the upper receiver with a small tip screw and then you install a charging handle in it. The charging handle is made from two parts. One is charging handle rod and the second one is actual charging handle. And then use a spring or rubber band as I did to all keep it under the tension. You might already notice my bolt assembly does not have a side bolt imitation plate installed. This because it's easy to access a hop up this way, and also I'm still using old prototype upper. Now the gearbox, and this is probably the most important part in this tutorial. I have a OEM shell and a custom one for comparison, so let's check what changes are need to be done here. On the left side, there are basically none drastic changes. I only removed some material around spring guide for the disconnector and as you can see here this is how it looks and this is optional however remember do not remove the spring guide itself remember all these cuttings and sandings are at your own responsibility also i'm using g36 disconnector not the ak1 but if you have ak disconnector in your hands don't worry, it's easily modifiable to be G36 disconnector. You just need to remove some material from this part. And you got yourself the correct disconnector for this build. Now, the right side. This is gonna be more complicated. As you can see, I removed this pin and also i removed the lip and the half of the thread housing for the ak fire selector if you are not comfortable with this you can always print files for oem shell however you should know that you are gonna be limited just to the left side fire selector and you are gonna have to use ak selector bits to get your safety working correctly. When we talk about AK selector bits, you can see I modified this part. Then on the right side of the half gear, I'm using a 3D printed part. However, you can print both right and left side of the half gear and you connect them with a screw that goes all the way from the right to the left and Thanks to this screw, the part is gonna be rigid.
then we have a custom trigger and trigger shuttle i recommend you to print these with a high end fail especially the trigger shuttle the custom trigger shuttle is responsible for safety to work because selector plate will block the trigger movement when the fire selector is in safe position so to assemble it first of all we will install a left side fire selector plate and then the right side the right side fire selector plate is secured in place using very short m3 screws and again i can't stress this enough make sure your screws don't protrude into the gearbox mechanism itself make sure there is no back play or slick in those geared parts also make sure your mechanism works smoothly any possible back play between the gears will potentially result in a slack between left and right side fire selector levers the wiring needs to be done as shown in the video if you are not sure how to wire the wires check my discord support channel there are more detailed pictures about this topic this gets us to our custom motor cage the motor cage is based around ak motor cage but we will have to remove some material from the back deepen the groove on the front so our cables will fit in there and also take out some material from the bottom of the cage again if you are not sure check the discord channel where you will find more detailed pictures now we are ready to assemble everything together and get our very own brand 2 so let's put our gearbox into the lower right now i have gearbox in the lower but it's not fully seated before we fully seated we have to check if our cables are in their places if our both selected levers are in a safe position and then we push our selector plate on the right side to the back and we are ready to full seat the gearbox if our fire selected levers are not in the same position on both sides we lift the gearbox upwards and do this operation again then we can install a grip screw let's check if our fire selector mechanism actually works if we confirmed everything works as it's supposed to we proceed to the back strap just install the back strap and secure it with a three millimeter pin upper and lower assembly first of all we start with connecting the gearbox to the cable extension when these are connected we take our lower receiver install the back of the lower receiver into the stock mount first and then we close up the lower receiver to the upper receiver when these two are connected we take our barrel assembly and we slide it into the rails in upper receiver hop-up chamber must be pressed on the gearbox face if that's not happening apply the force on a barrel until it is now install the pin 
that connects the battle block and the lower receiver. If your hop-up chamber is in place as I already mentioned and your pin is installed, you can tighten down the screws in the bottom rail. If you remember, we let these screws loose when we were putting together barrel assembly. Next time you are gonna take apart this gun, don't unscrew these screws because they keep everything shimmed as it's supposed to be. To actually connect a receiver and a barrel assembly, also install side rails. When the side rails are installed, you can install back a front sling loop we removed before. Now you've got yourself your very own Airsoft Band 2. If you manage to spot a bigger gap between lower receiver and stock mount block, not mind it, please, it's there because I'm using old gen upper receiver and I managed to print it about 2 millimeters longer than it's supposed to be. this installation isn't easy so if you are having any questions or some steps are unclear to you don't mind to contact me below the video or better on my discord channel where you can find more detailed pictures or how to position the stls on your build plate thank you for buying this kit and see you with my next work